my name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It is my first video of 2024, so a very happy new year to all of you and I am so excited for another year of sewing and creating. The year has just started but I'm already so behind on posting content so I'm going to jump right into today's tutorial. I'm going to show you how I made this quilted patchwork jacket so let's get sewing. So I was actually back home in Malaysia last month because my grandma turned 90 and I made her an embroidered photo quilt which I am so proud of. I did make a short about it so please check it out if you want to see more details on the blanket but I have a ton of fabric left over. Most of it is still uncut but a lot of them are already cut into these triangle pieces so I think I want to make a quilted patchwork jacket. I have seen a ton of these all over Pinterest and I am absolutely obsessed, so I am so excited to make one of my own. I'm going to be using this free pattern, it's called the Paula Workwear Jacket from FabricStores.com. I'll make sure to link it down below and let's get started. I printed out the pattern and as always, I start out by tracing the size that I need and I decided to go with a size 810. I prefer tracing the size that I need rather than cutting out the pattern so that I can reuse the same pattern again if I need a different size without having to print it out every time. I'm going to start patchworking now and since I have so many triangle pieces, I'm going to go with this pattern that I found on Pinterest. I'm starting with four triangles in alternating colors and here is what it looks like sewn together. Then I alternate the cream squares with the patchwork squares to create this kind of checkerboard design. This is what it looks like sewn together and pressed, and now it's time to move on to the quilting. I'm using this cream colored cotton as my backing, and I'm placing this wrong sides up. Then I place my cotton batting on top and make sure to lay it out as flat as I can. This is the batting that I bought. I got it at Joann's and it's 100% cotton because I want to make sure that this jacket is breathable. I'm placing my patchwork piece on top, sandwiching the batting between both layers, again making sure everything is laying nice and flat. Now I'll draw lines vertically and horizontally to use as a guide for the quilting. I'm using an air erasable marker and you can really do any design that you like, but here is a close-up of mine. This is optional, but I highly recommend switching your regular presser foot to a walking foot. The walking foot helps feed all of the layers evenly through as you sew. This is what the piece looks like fully quilted and I'm going to start with the front of the jacket and I did add an additional inch to the length. I went ahead and cut this out and repeated the same steps for my other front panel. Transparently, it's been several days since I started this project, but I finally have all of my pieces quilted. Quilting and patchworking always takes up so much more time than I think that it will, but I finally have all of my pieces, so let's start putting this jacket together. Here is the back of my jacket already cut out, and I'm laying my front pieces right sides facing. I'll sew together along the shoulder seams, and this is what the jacket should look like at this point. Next step is to sew on the sleeves. I decided to make the patchwork squares on the sleeves slightly smaller than the one on the bodice because I thought the different sizes would look nice, but now that I see it together, I am unclear if I like that decision or not. I'm laying my bodice piece flat so I can place my sleeves right sides facing. I'm pinning them together making sure that I match the notches that were indicated in the pattern. Now that everything is securely pinned, I'll go ahead and sew this together and this is what it should look like now. Next is to sew on the other sleeve, and you can see here that the side seam along the bodice and sleeve is still left unsewn. I'll sew this together right sides facing, and then I'll repeat that on the other side. Here is what the jacket is looking like so far, and I think it's looking pretty cute, and I also wanted to show you that I covered all of the raw edges on the inside with some DIY bias tape. Moving on, the original jacket pattern comes with a collar, but I want my jacket to have a hood instead, and I will be self-drafting this, but I'm going to show you all of the steps. I need to find the measurement from the center front to the center back, so I work my way along the neckline, and for me, that measurement is 10 inches. I'm starting out with some paper, and I'm drawing a horizontal line as well as a vertical one. From the point where the two lines meet, I'm going to measure down 2 inches and make a mark. From this point, I'll draw a curved line that meets the horizontal line to accommodate the curve of the neckline. Based on my earlier measurement, this needs to measure 10 inches, so I'm working my way along the curved line and marking at 10 inches. I'm also adding 5 eighths of an inch for seam allowance. Now I'm using a hoodie as a guide to trace out the general shape of a hood. I want my hood to be oversized, so from this point, I measure up 17 inches and make a mark. Now I'm also going to extend the width of the hood, making adjustments until I'm happy with the shape, and here is my hood pattern. I'm placing my hood pieces right sides facing and I'll sew together here. 
I ended up trimming off about an inch from the bottom because I felt that the hood was a little bit too big and I also made sure to cover the raw edge of the seam allowance with bias tape. Next is to sew the hood to the jacket and I'm just placing them right sides facing and pinning them together making sure that everything is even and working my way across. I'll sew this together and here is what the jacket is looking like so far. Again, I covered the raw edge of the seam allowance with bias tape. I also decided to round out the edges of my jacket along the hem. Next step is to finish the raw edges along the hem center front and hood with some bias tape. I made my own and I'll probably make a short tutorial on exactly how I did this and I'll make sure to link it down below. I start by laying my bias tape right sides facing to the jacket and I'm sewing along the edge using my presser foot as a guide. Then I work my way sewing along all of the raw edges of the jacket. Here is what that looks like sewn and next I'm going to fold the bias tape once and then once more so that the folded edge meets the seam and pin that in place. I'm working in sections so I continue to pin and then I decided to hand sew that in place. It did take me ages to hand sew the bias tape but it looks so nice and clean so I really think it was worth it. Of course, this jacket needs some pockets as well so I made these patchwork pockets and I sewed them to the inside of the jacket. For the button closure, I decided to go with snaps because I'm still not super confident about making my own buttonholes at home, but I got these on Amazon and I'll make sure to link them down below. I went ahead and hand sewed all of the snaps on with matching gold thread and here is the finished jacket. It is so cozy and I'm definitely going to be wearing this a lot this spring. Here is what it looks like with the hood on and the buttons done up. Because I finished all of the raw edges with bias tape, this jacket is technically reversible and I think these patch pockets are so cute. I did also make a jacket for Daisy because I haven't made her anything in such a long time. I'm also going to post a tutorial for her jacket so make sure to look out for it and I hope you enjoyed this video. I think our jackets turned out adorable and I'll be posting more photos on my Instagram so make sure you're following me there at Little Toe. I also still have some leftover fabric, so let me know in the comments what else I should make. And as always, thank you so much for watching.